We have an exciting program for you today, starting with volleyball in the midst of Maction. We will then transition from the court to the field as field hockey is still looking to get back into the swing of things following their matchup against UC Davis. And to close out our show, we will be looking upward as we look for Ball State sports rising stars in our segment, Cardinals Taking Flight. Live from Ball State University, this is Cardinal Sports Live Plus. Welcome everyone to Cardinal Sports Live Plus. Filling in once again for Jace Miller, I am your host Blake Flynn. And joining me today are my analysts Jackie Madden and Dawson Perel. How are we doing this evening and how is homecoming weekend treating you both? Great, great. I'm doing well. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to homecoming, especially our homecoming game we got coming oh, yeah. up. Of course. Hope it's a good one. And I wouldn't be remiss without mentioning, I found out I was hosting this about two hours ago and I gotta say that we did not plan this with the matching <laughs> shoes, but obviously Jackie also oh, shares. Oh, we, we're killing it. We're killing the game. I'll, I'll get me a pair. I'll, I'll, Need I'll eventually. It. Definitely. Everybody's got to have a pair <laughs> exactly. of dogs. At least one. Let us start this show with a serve and take a look at volleyball. This past weekend, Ball State had a successful stay in Ohio, defeating both the Ohio Bobcats and the Kent State Golden Flashes. This weekend, they will be traveling to DeKalb for a two-game slate against Northern Illinois. From two competitive wins in the conference play, what do you think this team has learned and what can they apply to their NIU matchups? Well, I think it's simple, Blake, and I think uh, they just really got to repeat the success we've seen from them this season. I mean, they're, they're having a very successful year, and I think the uh, month of October has been nothing short of that. The Cardinals have won four of their last five matchups, and as you were mentioning, two of those include two very good road wins uh, this past week, one against Ohio and the other against Kent State, and a lot of credit in those two wins this past week. Got to go to Katie Eagle. Eganoff, excuse me, she had one of the best weeks we've seen from an outside hitter so far this season. Had 17 kills along with an ace against Ohio and then 15 kills against Kent State. And it's not only her. I mean, this team, we, we've seen just uh, from the start of the season, now kind of down on the, on the uh, final stretch of the year, this team has improved a ton. And uh, I think, you know, uh, it, it won't take much to see a big a postseason push from this team because they definitely have the talent to do so and I think we, we've seen that so again just keep on doing what you're doing keep on rolling. I definitely agree like you said Katie made a statement in both of those games. Uh, I saw our interview Coach Phillips had and as far as she spoke on specifically speaking on how that she wanted her team to win in more in a more composed w way in a more composed manner and that's clearly what we saw in these two um, most recent matchups. The Cars had their second best attacking um, night of the season. And I think that's a statement there as far as them going after offensively and defensively. Because as we know, like I've say, previously said numerous of times, you got to do it on both sides of the court, both sides of the net, no matter what you're playing. So I've definitely saw in those two games that they're making sure that they make their mark and do that. Um, a couple other players in the game against Ohio who had double-digit kills were Carson Taylor and Anaya Kennedy. I've previously spoken on Anaya as far as being my Cardinal taking flight um, once before. And she's definitely, you know, continuously improved and shown that, hey, I'm going to be here for my team and I'm going to make an impact out there. Um, against the game in Kent State, like you said, Katie had, what, 15 kills. Yep. She also had a point four hundred and sixty two attacking percentage. So, that again, that shows you she's making sure she's doing it offensively and def defensively. I think definitely going against when they're coming up against um, NIU, they're going to make sure that they bring that same intensity and all overall continuously play as a team. Yeah, a lot of love for the – Huskies in recent matchups, obviously with the homecoming football game, and yeah. then now they are three and sixteen on the year, one and eight in the MAC. So obviously you want to get to win those games as well, including those games or excluding those games. There are seven games left in the season. You got two versus EMU, two at Toledo, one against Miami, and then two versus Western Michigan to start out the year. Currently we are sixth in the standings with a conference record of five and four, tied with Ohio, who we just picked up that win against, and Western Michigan, who we'll see later. So how important is it, especially with those close standings, for these teams to pick up the easy wins they need against these teams like NIU, and then obviously try and snag a couple wins against teams maybe we didn't think they could beat? 
I mean, it's huge, right? And you mentioned in IU not having the best year. You mentioned it, 3-16. and 16, They've lost their last four. But I think at the same time, you look on that from the other side of things, they're hungry for a win. And you mentioned the rankings are tight. And although we are kind of at the point of the season where Northern Illinois' chances aren't the highest, they're still going to be battling just for either bragging rights or for maybe the slim chance to slip into the tournament. So I think it's going to be a trap matchup for Ball State. They still got to bring it to them. And Northern Illinois still has some talent. They got a freshman duo in uh, Ava Griven Giot and Ella Strasberger. Ava led the team, uh, leads the team, excuse me, with just under three and a half kills per set. And then Ella with 453 assists on the season, more than anyone else on the team, everyone else on the team, excuse me, combined. So, you know, they're a hungry team, a young team. And if Ball State isn't on their A game, I think Northern Illinois has a real chance to kind of catch them off guard. So, again, Get, try to pick up those easy wins, but I, I think the reality is no, 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 wins, no win excuse me, is going to come easy enough. So uh, I think this, this is a big matchup, matchups here against uh, the Huskies. As Dawson said, no win is going to come easy enough. We're in, like you said, we're in sixth place out of, the, out of that top six, so we're at the bottom. We have to scrap our way and fight our way to the top. And it can be done, but I, like we have to come into each game not taking anything lightly. Coming into, uh, coming into the game, making sure that we're on top of our A game and making sure that overall we get it done as far as whoever we're going against. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of mentioned it with NIU, a very young team. And I think we can kind of tell with Ball State this season for Coach Kelly Miller Phillips' team that they are a little bit younger, obviously. Anaya yeah. Kennedy, just a sophomore. Carson Tyler, the very super talented freshman. They are missing some pieces from last year, some pieces like Marie Plitt, Haven Gates, Zoe Conway, and Kate Vinson. And again, meaning more people are stepping up, like Megan Walonsky, yeah. Madison Buckley. Do you think this team is honestly missing those key players from last season a little bit more than we might expect? I mean, I think definitely. And uh, I think also it's going to be a whole different world when you enter in that postseason play because, you know, I think underclassmen, they can get it done in regular season, but postseason is a whole, whole different world. MAC tournament is going to be tough. So I think it's really going to be a big test to see how these younger players – uh, you know, how they perform in a win or go home or a, a like that, like that environment. So I think it, it is big. And yes, we are missing them. Of course, they're having a great year. No, no credit taken away. But at the same time, you know, I think if we had them back, there were some some holes that might be filled or, or maybe maybe some losses that would become wins. But at the same time, you can't have those hypoth hypotheticals. I think you just got to look forward and hopefully we'll see those underclassmen step up w when postseason comes around. It makes a difference having that having those vets there, you know, alongside you as you're playing. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that, like he was saying, it's going to give the opportunity for, like you said, Megan Walonsky and other individual players like Carson that you, you know, named. It's going give to th give them that motivation to step up and say, hey, I have to, you know, be the new Megan Walonsky. Or, you know, I have to step up and fill in those spots where she might have, you know, took the place. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's definitely a different player when the lights get brightest, so we just hope. Yep. And, again, I believe we have the right person at the helm with Coach Phillips. She's yep. done it before. Yeah. No doubt she'll do it again. Very much so. The Cardinals play at 7 p.m. on Friday night and then at 5 p.m. on Saturday evening. Swinging things over to Briner Sports Complex, Coach, Coach Walsh and the field hockey team has lost four straight games, most recently to UC Davis. The square off against the Bobcats of Ohio this week. What mindset do you think the, the women as a team have following in the midst of this losing streak, and what do they need to do to prepare for Ohio? I mean, I think losses are obviously demotivating, especially four in a row towards the end of the year. Um, but I think they just need to put them behind, uh, put the losses behind them, focus on the next game versus Ohio. You know, have that short-term memory. You know, look back on the loss, take some notes, put apply it to your game, but then forget about it and move forward. And I think some of those issues come on that offensive end. At least a lot of them do. I think they just need to be more aggressive, take some more shots on on goal, and hopefully more points will of course follow suit with that so you know th there are several issues among this uh field hockey team i mean you can just take a look at the record and kind of see that i mean, hate to say it but um again there there's still some some season left and i think they they have the ability to turn it around you look back on early october they had those back-to-back -back wins against longwood and then central michigan so they have that potential to get the job done and they've They've had so many close matchups this year. I just think they need to work on being more aggressive and then finishing games. We've seen so many overtime matchups for this field hockey team and so many close games that have just resulted on that uh, uh, on a mark on the loss column. So I think just finishing games and being
being more aggressive is what they really need to keep in mind moving forward on the last couple games of the regular season. I definitely agree. You, like you said, you're coming to that tail end of the season. Um, they let in this in this recent um, the recent game that they had against UC. They let a one goal lead slip away, and I feel like that was a of course that uh, what ultimately cost them the game. But that was a huge statement as to where where when they were tied against uh, when they were tied up with UC. They should have had you know a, a more so conversation as far as like hey you know we're tied up. They came back. We should make the adjustments we need to make overall so that way we can still come out come out on top and win the game. So concluding all of that, I think more so we need to maintain maintain the def defensive intensity as he was talking about. Uh, you can definitely I was I watched a little bit of the game. You can definitely see of course how like the def the defensive intensity you know it switched a little bit. They wasn't as intense as how they once were and when they had the lead. So definitely making sure they maintain that and also making the most out of their scoring opportunities offensively to create, you know, offensively, but creating them def defensively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, although the record, again, 3-15 and 15 doesn't show it, there is still some hope. Like you said, we're at the tail end of the season. There's yeah. three games left before the MAC championship. And like you talked about volleyball, Ball State's currently sixth in the top six yep. make it. So they're still, like you said, scratching and clawing their way in. Yeah. How important – even though this team is in the midst of a four-game losing streak, for coaches and players to have the confidence that they can still do something even when things might not be going their way. Oh, I mean, that's huge, right? Just the thought alone that you can still reach it into the postseason tournament if you get a couple wins here in the last three uh, games of the season. I think that's big. And, of course, you're heading into your next matchup against the Ohio Bobcats. And Ohio not having the strongest season either. They're 5-9. and nine. They are pretty tough on the road, and that game's going to be at Muncie. They're 3-2 they're and two, uh, in, or in away matchups. They've also lost four of their last five, so I think they're going to be hungry uh, to get a win. And, and they're kind of also in the same spot as Ball State where, yes, they are – they, they are, I think, in that postseason tournament as we speak, but it's very, very likely they could fall out. So they're also fighting for a spot. So it's going to be a very co competitive matchup, two teams that are trying to stay in that top six, reach it, uh, reach the postseason uh, tournament. And, again, I think it's going to be a very physical, har hard-fought matchup. Their confidence makes all of the, all of the difference, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're going into a game, whether they're losing at the half. It makes a huge difference. If you come into that second half of the game with more confidence, more intensity, saying, hey, we're going to take over, you know, we're going to make the changes and the adjustments that we need, we should have made, you know, in the first half of the game, it makes a huge difference. So I think them coming into these next com this upcoming game that he was talking about with confidence and intensity, it'll make all the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Again, like you guys <laughs> perfectly said, obviously not the season to start, but there is still something worth yeah. fighting for. And we do have the chance. Ohio, as I was checking the standing, like you said, currently outside behind Ball State. So this is going to be a super important matchup for tournament position and seeding. They are set to square off at 3 p.m. on Friday at the Briner Sports Complex against Ohio. Now for our last segment of the episode, we will be looking for those rising stars here at Ball State in another edition of Cardinals Taking Flight. Jackie, I'll have you start off. Who is this week's Cardinal taking flight. For My you. Cardinal taking flight for this week is Cam Pickett. He's from the same hometown of Chicago as me, so it was it was kind of I was I was rooting for him. So um, I'm just gonna speak just specifically starting when he was in high school. Um, he was a four-year starter, a Letterman winner. He played wide receiver and defensive back. You have very few players who play both offensive, well, offensively and defensively, and that to me just stood out. It was like. That was it, it's him being able to read the plays defensively, offensively, and having the edge, you know, when he, when he is defensively playing, you know, lining up against someone, that, you know, having that edge against them, it makes a little bit of a difference. Um, he was the ninth best wide receiver in the state, seventh, be seventh best player from Chicago. He had 24 touchdowns his senior season. Um, his uh, last year, which will be his red shirt freshman year, he didn't really get much action. Like I said, it was red shirt uh, freshman year. He's a red shirt sophomore this year. Um, this season, he's uh, averaging a total of 50 rushing yards off a total of seven attempts. So he hasn't had a great amount of attempts, but every time he has had attempts, he's done something with the ball, done something, done something with the ball, and shown that hey, you give me the ball, you know, coach, whatever you need me to do, I can make sure I go out there on the field and do it. Um, three of those attempts was from the previous game against Kent State. Um, his receiving yards, a total of 271. Against their um, most recent matchup in against Van Vanderbilt, uh, despite the loss, he made a 29-yard grab uh, right outside the red zone. So, like I said, he's definitely shown on the field that when he has the ball in his hands, he can do something special with it. I definitely think um, we, if he has more opportunities, he can definitely make more of a mark out there on the field. But, you know, he got to play as a team as well. And I feel like he's definitely shown that he can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think – 
like you said, playing both sides of the ball. That gives you a little more insight yeah. because as a receiver, that helps you understand coverages. Exactly. And as a DB, that helps you understand formations, route trees, and everything. Yeah. Dawson, I'll kick it over to you. Who is your Cardinal taking play? Yeah, I'm going to stick with the football team. I'm going to go with the redshirt junior linebacker, Joey Stimler. Uh, he's from Cincinnati, and coming out of high school wasn't really that sought after of a recruit, only a two-star. Um, and after his freshman year, didn't play much, utilized that redshirt season, had a redshirt freshman, redshirt so sophomore year, and now heading into his redshirt junior year. Um, he, he's really breaking out, especially in these past two weeks, coming off back-to-back -back dominating uh, games. The first against Kent State two weeks back, he had eight tackles along with 1.5 sacks. That was a career high for him on the sacks. A huge contribution in that win over the Golden Flashes, which was a huge one, of course. Uh, the first win since week one for Ball State, and on top of that, the first conference win of the season. And then he follows that up with a big win, again, or a big game against Vanderbilt. He had 11 yeah. tackles. Um, that was a career high for him and on the road. Of course, unable to get the win over Vanderbilt, but still proved great in that matchup on a big stage at an SEC school. And yeah, I, I just see him wa watching the games, just definitely a middle linebacker that just catches my eye. He can really wrap up uh, offensive players and take them down easily. A, a big guy, and uh, I can't wait to see how he does his redshirt senior year. Not only that, the rest of this season, because he's definitely someone that just catches my eye on every play. Yeah, and I will say in my four years here at Ball State, we have had some pretty good linebackers mm -hmm. off the top of the head, thinking Clayton Cole. Cole Pierce and yep. also Braden Martin, who have since graduated or transferred and moved on with their careers. Mm -hmm. So to see people stepping up like Stimler is definitely a plus for this defense. Maybe he will be, and it seems like it so far, he's playing up to their level, eventually taking their place. Um, like I said, I'm filling in for Jace today, so I went ahead and adopted his Cardinal taking flight, but it also remains on the gridiron. Uh, so my Cardinal taking flight is Tanner Koziel. Uh This is... Mm -hmm a name we've gotten the known and have seen better get better every single game he goes out there against Vandy nine receptions 68 yards and a touchdown he had 31 yards after catch so getting those quick passes and then being able to extend the play fight for yardage in a, on a 7.6 yards per reception and if you don't remember I don't know how many people do remember obviously we lost Brady Hunt last year who was a big yeah. thing but Tanner Kozil actually entered the portal transferred out, committed to Louisville, and then decommitted from Louisville and mm. chose to come back. So him sticking it out was definitely a good thing. Uh, he was a 2022 MAC first team, and that was his freshman season. So as soon as he stepped on campus, yeah. getting it done in 2023, last year, MAC third team. So it's good to see someone like Koziel getting better every rep and being an important part to this young Ball State offense and team in general as they make their way through the season. Mm -hmm. Well, that is going to do it here for today's episode of CSL Plus. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to check out our socials at BSU underscore CSL on Instagram and X and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For Jackie Madden, Dawson Perel, producer Trevor Martin, director Jackson McCord, and everyone else working behind the scenes to make this show possible, I have been your host, Blake Flynn. Thank you for watching and happy homecoming.